welcome to a new episode of Smoke Time. And today we're gonna be having some flour that is Pink Rose Triple Bean Dream. Now from what I've read, this is extremely THC heavy and is very head heavy. So we're gonna try it out. And we're going to be blasting the vinyl version of Sulfuric Disintegration by Colorado's of Feather and Bone. Wow. This sounds so good on vinyl. The cassette sounds great. Don't get me wrong. I like having both. But like, holy shit. The production on here, especially with the drums and the vocals, top fucking notch. I accidentally forgot that the lyrics and all the, um, you know, who did what is on the poster hanging up behind me. I need to move the ceremonial bloodbath poster. But, Sulfuric Disintegration, it feels like such a perfect record to, you know, blast while we try out a more, what I've read, is relaxing, chill strain of flour so let's give this a whirl again thank you robert for this gnarly like little one hitter it's a dab rig but i use it for flour purposes so let's test this bad boy out when i first looked at it i was like huh i wonder you know how gnarly this is and i didn't look it up on my phone but uh, when I got home, I was like, oh shit, <laughs> like, this is a gnarly hybrid, which is another, another reason I threw a feather and bone on, because to me, they're a hybrid death metal band. They have those bestial black death vibes, but at the end of the day, it's death metal. And that's awesome. If you can pull that off, fuck yeah. Like, I have a bunch of releases here I want to go over real quick, but this is... A smoke time video so I know some of you are here to hear how this is and whatnot but it said it's more of like a calm head high so let's see how it makes my body feel because right now my knee is fucking killing me so I'm deciding on what knee brace to put on so this might change that we'll see Tastes like fucking lemons. Remember that candy lemon heads? That's what this tastes like. That instantly brought me back to 25 cent fucking lemon heads. Oh my god, that's delicious. Fuck yeah. But since I've got my turntable back up and running, I've not just been blasting the new A Feather and Bone record, which arrived yesterday. I've been listening to a lot of Eternal Champion. I mean, I've been geeking out. Although I don't have the new record, I've been listening to it on my cell phone as much as I hate doing that. It's so fucking good. But I have some other Bestial-styled death metal releases that, if you haven't heard yet, I want to recommend. But if you watch this channel, you've already heard these records, but they're definitely worth revisiting. They're, it's just, it's good shit, trust me. Just, like, this is good shit so far. It just tastes so fucking good. I like how you can kind of control how much smoke you're getting by, like, Pressing in. I didn't get any there.
I only put a little bit in there because I what I read this shit's strong, so. I packed a bowl. Fuck yeah. That is delicious, by the way. If you're at your local dispensary and they happen to have some pink rose, triple bean dream, get this shit. It's fucking awesome. Like, it legit tastes like a fucking lemon is in my mouth. Not in a bad way. Like, legit lemon heads. Awesome. But, first up is probably my second favorite, if not my favorite of the bunch. And to me, this band is super underrated. That ceremonial bloodbath, the tides of blood on Sentient Ruin. As you can see, they definitely love themselves some war metal, but Vancouver, BC, death metal horde ceremonial bloodbath debut with their long awaited first full length album. And, you know, they're influenced by bands like Blasphemy, Sarcophago, Mystifier, Beherit, Archgoat, Mortician, and Deicide. Yeah, I didn't make that up. So, if you haven't heard Ceremonial Bloodbaths, The Tides of Blood yet, yeah, this is so fucking good. It's like Conqueror at times, but with like death metal. If that sounds like it's up your alley, yo, trust me, this is a fucking banger. I have the tape and the LP, and like I said, since I got my turntable back up and running, it's like, oh my goodness, I can't believe how gnarly this fucking record sounds. Like, the drumming is just ridiculous. Like, on all these releases, I think the drumming is, like, the standout. Except for one of them. But next up, 20 Bucks Spin, Ruin Lust's last record, Choir of Babel. I loved this, this release. I thought it was amazing. And I didn't see a single friend of mine post a copy on Instagram, talk about it. I mean, Bestial Magnetism on its own is like, holy shit, this song is fucking sick. And like, when you have members of just a ton of amazing fucking bands involved, like, it, it's just a great project. And if you've never heard Ruin Lust, like, seriously, check these guys out. They are fucking insane. Choir of Babel by Ruin Lust. Their last record was a fucking banger as well. And Sentient Ruin, like, reissued... Uh, well, they put out the vinyl, like, right around the time this dropped on Wax. So you could have you got their you could have got their first record and then the new record. I got the cassette at a superstition shit. Wait, was it superstition? Fuck. It was I think it was superstition. I honestly forget off the top of my head. But um branded upon the flesh of history by S. Bennett, M. Revicus, and J. Wilson. You get that Dan Lowndes production. It's fucking great. Trust me. Check out Ruin Lust, Choir of Babel on 20 bucks spin records. I feel like this was just super slept on last year and it definitely shouldn't have been. Like, I feel like a lot of people really would like this band. Just give them a fucking chance. Like, I know you can always just listen to Titan Blood and, you know not have to check out any of these bands really but like at the same time like i really love the sound the feather and bone have i really love what ceremonial bloodbath are doing all these bands have their own strengths and i feel like vermin womb on decline the whole strength is in that drum sound 
The drumming on here just has this fucking... It, it's so sick. Same with the new A Feather and Bone. Like, the blasting is... It just has this crazy... And the same thing with, like, the guitar work. It's just very well produced. I think Arthur Risk might have... You know what? I forgot I had the cassette. We can find out who fucking did it. Yep, mixed and mastered by Arthur Risk, the eternal champion himself. Fuck yeah, Arthur. I don't know if you're watching this, brother, but I'll hit you up on Instagram because I do need to talk to you. But you get Eli from Spectral Voice doing guest vocals on two tracks, Disrepair and Cancer. And Vermin Womb is J.P. Damron on Battery. That's how you know this is gnarly. When the drums are called Battery, yeah. You, that's where the bestial vibe comes in. I mean, but you have Zach Harlan on Low Frequencies and ELM on Vengeance and Suffering. This was recorded, mixed, and mastered by Dave Otero at Flatline Audio 2016. Such a killer fucking record. And I love Ethan's artwork and the Vermin Womb logo. Like, fuck yeah. I don't own any Vermin Womb merchandise. And like, all these are black vinyl except for um, Ruin Lust. So you're not missing out on, you know, anything. Even the new A Feather and Bone, I just got black vinyl. It sold out like instantly, but like, I'm so fucking glad I got a copy. I did a trade for it. It might have taken a month to get here, but it was well worth the fucking wait. But lastly, see, I got into talking about tunes. This stuff's definitely, you know, something. Oh yeah, see? Oh fuck. Oh man. I, yep, this shit's, um, I guess it mess, makes you fucking stupid for 20 minutes or something, because that was dumb. I, I fucked, I forgot that was empty that fucking fast. It's so tasty, like, for real. Wow. Pink Rosé Triple Bean Dream, folks. Go to your local dispensary. I heard New York legalized it. Fucking A. Recreationally, finally. But lastly, Black Curse has been making the rounds with Endless Wound. I have the cassette in the mail, actually. I'm fucking stoked. But I love the way this sounds on wax. I'm happy to have it on cassette as well. Like, total support for Eli and the boys. I love this promo photo. It just looks ancient and it's amazing. Their merchandise, Pirate Press has been doing. Again, amazing. Black vinyl, but I love the fucking LP sticker. Fuck. This bad boy's over. Let me really quick. I'm sorry. This is a manual. So when it's over, I'm used to it just stopping spinning, but th this doesn't. It just keeps fucking spinning forever. So you can't fall asleep, like, listening to it. Uh, I forgot to sh show you, but it's it's a black LP. You're, but the sticker on the back, it's what's on that poster, which is badass. But Black Curse, Endless Wound, I mean, one of the best releases of last year. I think we all can agree that this interested a lot of us. I saw this on pretty much almost everyone's year-end list. And rightfully so, this is such a fucking killer release. And hearing Eli on, you know, fucking 
guitar and vocals. It's awesome. Again, just kind of going the more bestial death metal route, like especially if you've seen photos of them on stage and whatnot with like the chains and everything. Same with Morris, it's just crazy. I'm pretty sure Morris is in Black Curse. I might be thinking of Abysmal Dimensions, but did I? Oh no. I think I lost, I did, oh no. I had this fu fucking sick little postcard with uh, Eli Live I wanted to show you. But, it, oh here it is, found it. Yeah, check this out. It's got the fucking chains and everything, like, very fucking savage. And this release, like, I mean, like, like, that, that could be a fucking Beharit, you know, promo photo, but it's Black Curse. It's sick that three of these bands are from Colorado, and like, the same, like, area, kind of. And Black Curse, if you haven't heard Endless Wounds yet, man, you're missing out. It's just such a killer fucking slab of bestial death metal. And when I say that, it just like it has like kind of Titan Blood vibes, but it's its own fucking monster. Like it's something I really can't categorize, but you know the way that the aesthetic is, it's just fucking great. The artwork reminds me a lot of um, Swallowed Lunatarial, although it's very different. At the same time, it's very similar. And if you've never seen Swallow Lunatarial's artwork, it's fucking so crazy. I'll show you. Hold on. You have. Uh, oh man. I wish taste could be transferred over. But look at this. Rest in peace, Timo Katola, man. This is my favorite piece of his, probably. Look at that. Wow. That's what I mean, like... This face just kind of reminds me of this face. And it's just very amazing. And I just love Black Curse's music as well, because this is what you're gonna feel like when this starts blasting it's evil as fuck sounding and just awesome as soon as you hear, like, hear entrapped by decay you're gonna be like yo i mean in in raptured by decay you're gonna be like whoa this is fucking awesome and if you've never heard swallowed oh my goodness one of the gnarliest bands ever. MSUO and Dark Descent put this bad boy out. If you can get your paws on the vinyl, do it. But I know, I think CDs are still available. If not, I apologize for real. Because it's one of those records you want in your collection. And if you've never heard it, go check it out. Because it's fucking some of the best craziest finish underground music ever like wow but we've been blasting the new of feather and bone sulfuric disintegration on profound lore it's fucking amazing everything about it from the production to the riffs to the fucking drum sound it is a fine dish of death metal with a side of bestial sauce it's awesome and this pink rose triple bean dream wow it made me feel pretty fucking stupid but at the same time I am very chill right now I don't feel stressed out uh, yeah definitely chill right now but you know I wouldn't like let's say you work construction don't smoke this before work for real like, I'm not even joking, like, if you're going to your dispensary and picking this up, 
this is some nighttime shit. Like, again, just like the OGFA, it's very fucking potent. I just, I can, yeah, I can barely fucking say what I want to. So yeah, this shit's gnarly. If you work like a sick job, do not smoke this before. If if you work any like job, real job type job, especially if you deliver pizza, yo, don't be smoking this shit and delivering pizza. It's a bad idea. I just was a delivery boy for a couple of years and I remember one time I smoked this silver haze. It was such a bad idea. But I, I would have to highly recommend this stuff. Like from what I read, you know, it's doing what it said, very euphoric, very head heavy. But I'm hoping that, you know, it makes my knee chill out a little bit. I've been having a lot of problems with my right knee lately. And my left is just like, fuck you also. But that's life and <laughs> we were blasting a feather and bone sulfuric disintegration if you haven't heard this yet try and get a copy before it's gone but I'm pretty sure you can get a CD so don't super stress unless you don't have a working CD player but that was a new episode of smoke time how do I feel about the pink rose triple dream yeah gnarly but if you got shit to do chill and wait till you're done doing that shit but as always thanks for watching you fucking rule Peace.